Hi, you guys. Welcome to Humboldt Redwood State Park. This is Shanna here. And I want to thank you guys for joining me for today's Junior Ranger. Today's program, we'll be talking about reptiles. Now, you're joining me here in the pre-registered program. And I want to make sure you know, in case you're watching this later on Facebook, there is a way to pre-register so you can cut your badge as a Junior Ranger. So the way you do that is you go ahead and pre-register at ports-ca.us slash junior dash ranger dash programs. And that should also be explained on Facebook or with YouTube, wherever you're watching this program. By registering to watch this program live, you will get a virtual junior ranger badge. And if you get four junior ranger badges, you will be mailed a junior ranger medal badge in addition to that if you watch eight programs you will get a junior ranger certificate and if you get to 10 you will get a junior ranger patch this is a beautiful fabric patch and it's quite shiny and this right here right in the center is actually the saber-toothed tiger our state fossil that's a pretty nice patch. So I hope you guys make it 10 Junior Ranger patches. Now today's topic that we're talking about is reptiles. I was going to explain to you guys about the reptiles, what they are, what reptiles we have here at Humboldt Redwood State Park, some superhero powers they have, and also their ecosystems. And then at the end, we can all take the Junior Ranger pledge together. So let's start off with what reptiles are. If you look right here, you can see reptiles have a scaly body with no fur, and they can live on land or in the water, but all reptiles breathe air. Reptiles are cold-blooded. What cold-blooded means is that you put them on your body, like a snake or a lizard on your arm or your neck, and they will have the same temperature as you. They do not have body heat and they also cannot cool themselves. If it's a 100 degree day, a reptile will need to hide under a log or a rock in order to cool off. And if it's a very cold winter day, they will look for a way to warm up. Most reptiles lay eggs, not all, but most. Reptiles have dry skin. If you've ever felt a frog, Frogs have moist skin, and so do salamanders. Reptiles do not. They usually have scales. Reptiles also have ear holes, but no outside ears. Like if you think of your dog or your cat, they have ears, but reptiles do not. Reptiles also have four legs, or they have zero legs. Now reptiles include turtles, crocodiles, snakes, lizards, pteranodons, and even dinosaurs. The ones we'd be learning about today are the ones that are still alive that live here in Humboldt Redwood State Park. That would be turtles, snakes, and lizards. Now, I don't know if you guys have studied metamorphosis yet. That really depends upon how old you are. But we study metamorphosis and the life cycle of various animals. For example, a butterfly lays eggs and then it has a caterpillar that looks very different from it. And then that caterpillar becomes a pupa in a cocoon and that hatches into another butterfly. So butterflies go through complete metamorphosis because they change a lot. Reptiles do not metamorphosize. This is the life cycle of reptiles. This is a snake, but it's the same for turtles and lizards. The adult is large and is what is around that can reproduce and then they lay the eggs. The eggs hatch into babies and those babies look almost exactly like the adults. So the babies look exactly like miniature adults in reptiles. That's one of the distinctive characteristics of reptiles. 
Now, there are various kinds of reptiles, and there are some animals we might get confused with that are not reptiles. So would you guys like a quiz to see if you understand? Let's try this. This is an iguana. Is an iguana a reptile? Well, it has scaly skin, four legs. Hmm, it does lay eggs. Well, it's a type of lizard. So yes, an iguana is a reptile. What about a crocodile? Let's see, scaly skin, big teeth, four legs, lays eggs, definitely a reptile. How about a frog? A frog on a little lily pad. If you have a frog on a lily pad sitting in the water, well, let's see, we talked about how their skin is kind of moist and they do have four legs, but they don't have any scales. They do lay eggs, but their eggs hatch into tadpoles and tadpoles look different than frogs. So those are what we call amphibians. Amphibians are a close relative of reptiles. This right here is a small alligator lizard. Alligator lizards, let's see, scaly skin, four legs, lay eggs, cold-blooded, definitely. How about this? This is a tortoise, a desert tortoise. Hmm, desert tortoises, well, scaly skin, and these scales right here on the back make up the turtle shell. You can still see the individual scales, and they do lay eggs, and they are cold-blooded. A tortoise, which is what you call a land turtle, lives in a dry environment, is a type of reptile. Snakes. Snakes have scaly skin. Most snakes lay uh, eggs and they're cold blooded. These are reptiles. How about this? This is a type of beetle. This type of beetle has its bones on the outside, not scales. This is actually its exoskeleton and it has six legs, not four. Hmm. Well, insects are definitely not reptiles. And then just to be extra tricky, what about this? Is that a reptile? No, that is a redwood seed cone. And there can be up to 50 tiny little seeds in here that grow the tallest tree in the world. But it's definitely not a reptile, even if it does look kind of scaly. So now you guys took a test on what a reptile is. Now let's talk about some reptiles that live here at Humboldt Redwood State Park. We have three main types of reptiles. The first one that I'm going to talk about is lizards. The second one I'm going to talk about is snakes. And the third one I'm going to talk about is turtles, because those are the type of reptiles we have here at Humboldt Redwood State Park. Let me show you guys some pictures because these are really beautiful reptiles. Our first reptile is going to be the western blue-tailed skink. I think that this is a very beautiful reptile. This is a type of lizard. Lizards have a superpower in the fact that they can regrow their tail. One of their main defenses is if a predator comes and tries to grab them, they can shed their tail. Most predators are very excited to get a meaty snack and will leave the lizard be while eating the tail. Now it does take them a long time to regrow the tail. And once they lose their tail, they are relatively defenseless. They can no longer shed their tail until they grow a new one. Now oh, this is called the Western Blue-Tailed Skink. And it is three to five and a half inches long. It has black and white creamy stripes on its body. And then its tail, is bright blue. They live in a burrow. A burrow is a hole in the ground. They prefer sunny grassy meadows and they're shy and often hide in the grass and under rocks and they are easily startled. They eat spiders, insects, and pill bugs and hibernate or sleep all winter and they're not commonly found in forests, just in the meadows. The blue-tailed skink. 
Now, this is an alligator lizard, and this is also an alligator lizard. We have a couple of different ideas of what an alligator lizard can look like. Now, alligator lizards are up to 10 inches long, and they also can regrow a new tail if they need to. That is the superpower of all lizards. And they bite really viciously, like an alligator you would expect it to, but they seldom draw blood. Now remember how I said they can look a few different ways. This lizard up here is camouflaged. It's trying to blend in. But during the mating season, when the alligators are looking, alligator lizards are looking for mates, they basically dress up to go on a date. They get really bright coloring. Sometimes yellows, oranges, even bright blues you'll see on some of the alligator lizards around here because it's mating season. Just dressed enough fancy to go on a date. Now, alligator lizards will eat insects, spiders, ticks, small baby mice, snails, and even small lizards. They really are as fierce as the name suggests. And another interesting thing about the alligator lizard is that they'll give birth to four to 15 babies. They do not lay eggs. They actually have live birth. And so sometimes you'll see itty bitty baby alligator lizards. The main difference between them and their parents is that they will be dark brown. Um, the alligator lizard also lives in the forest and grasslands, under trees, bark, rocks, and any other thing it can hide under to help it cool off. So that is the alligator lizard here at Humboldt Rabbit State Park. Our last type of lizard that we have here is going to be the western fence lizard. Now the western fence lizard is a pretty fancy looking lizard. It's got some blue too, and it's got really long toes. They got their name, western fence lizard, because they love to sit on rocks, fences, even climb up the side of houses and do push-ups. If you can and you have space, you might want to do some push-ups. They're very good exercise. As you can see, the western fence lizard gets very big muscles right in here from doing all of its push-ups. Why do they do push-ups? Well, their back is gray and camouflages, but unlike the alligator lizard that gets bright colors on its back, the western fence lizard has its bright colors on its belly. So it flashes its blue belly while doing those push-ups. It will sit on top of the rock or the fence and do push-up after push-up. And western fence lizards also fight over who gets the best spot to do the push-ups. You can see them wrestling with each other like miniature dinosaurs. One thing is, because they're so bright and they like to show off so much, they sometimes end up getting eaten by birds, mammals that see them there, and even alligator lizards. Now, these lizards are only about two and a half to three and a half inches long, and they're gray or black on the back, and they do have the bright, blue belly patch like we talked about and they eat spiders and insects and like I said they climb fences and houses but what's unusual is that they do not often climb trees. I personally think the reason for this is because when you think about a fence it's straight up and down so there's no shade or the side of a house might have no shade and the lizards are cold-blooded so they like to stay in the sun. However, if you think about a tree with all of its leaves and branches, the lizard would be in the shade. So maybe that's why they don't climb trees. Sometimes as scientists, we have to think about stuff, come up with a hypothesis or an idea and try and solve a problem. Now scientists have been studying the Western fence lizard, but not because of where it does push-ups. They've been studying it for a very special reason. You see, these western fence lizards have the superpower of being able to lose their tail and regrow it, but they have another superpower. And it's an amazing science fact that scientists have found out. Lyme disease is one of the diseases that humans can get. Lyme disease is when your immune system doesn't work very good and your joints get very sore. 
we get Lyme disease from tick bites. Now, what does that have to do with the Western fence lizard, Shanna, you ask? Well, I'll tell you. You see, the Western fence lizard oftentimes by its little ear right here will get a tick or two, tiny, tiny little tick. And when that tick sucks the blood of the Western fence lizard, the Western fence lizard uses its superpowers. It has a protein in its blood that actually kills the bacterium that causes Lyme disease. And so it not only kills a bacterium that kills Lyme disease, it cleans out the entire intestines of the tick. So ticks that have fed off of Western fence lizards do not carry Lyme disease and actually cannot make us sick. So the Western fence lizard is definitely helping us. Not only is it doing pest control on insects and spiders, but it's also helping us make sure that we don't get sick from Lyme disease from ticks. That's a pretty amazing, helpful superpower. So what else should we talk about here at Humboldt Redwood State Park? Those were the different types of lizards. We have three different types of lizards. Here at Humboldt Redwood State Park, we also have seven types of snakes. I hope you like snakes, because I certainly do. Our first type of snake, I'm going to show you with this beautiful model right here is a ring neck snake. Now this is not a real snake. This here's just a model, but you can see this snake is about eight to 30 inches long. It does have round pupils and they lay eggs, has a dark gray back and a bright red ring right after the head. That's why they called themselves a ring neck snake. However, its only defense is to tie itself in knots and show off its giant bright reddish orange underbelly. If you scare this snake, it will rise frantically and turn upside down because it's very afraid of humans and other animals. And what this does is it shows this bright red orange color that scares away predators. Now, Northwestern ringneck snakes are found in moist areas like under bark, rotting logs, or in the garden. And they can eat salamanders, small frogs, lizards, insects, worms, and small snakes. They are seldom seen out in the open. I like that snake. It's a very beautiful snake. Another type of snake that we have here at Humboldt Redwood State Park is the striped razor snake or California whip snake. It is 30 to 60 inches long. 60 inches long? How long is that? Let's see if I pull out my tape measure. 60 inches long, that's five feet. That's almost as long as I am. That is a long snake. But some of them here at Humboldt Redwood State Park get even longer. Now the striped racer snake does have a round pupil and it lays eggs and it has a dark black back with one or two stripes, I mean, sorry, one or three stripes running from the head to the tail. The belly, however, is yellowish pink. And sometimes, just like the ringneck snake, it may show off its belly to startle predators. Now this snake, is not docile like the ringneck snake. This snake bites repeatedly and aggressively, but luckily it is not venomous. Again, the striped racer snake is not venomous. Now, why would it bite repeatedly and aggressively if cornered? The reason why has to do with how they hunt. When they hunt, these snakes will hold their heads up out of the grass and look around and weave from side to side. The reason why they do that is because they're looking at depth perception and they like to eat things like frogs and grasshoppers that hop and lizards and birds and small mammals that all move very fast. So this kind of snake has to be able to catch a hopping frog or a hopping grasshopper. They swallow their prey whole and are not a constrictor. And remember, they do not have venom. 
If you get bit by this kind of snake, you will be fine. You just need some antibacterial ointment and probably a band-aid. Now they are found in moisture environments and they like to bask on the rocks or in the sun. Again, that is the striped racer snake or California whip snake. Here at Humboldt Redwood State Park, we also have the garter snake. Now garter snakes are 18 to 52 inches long, that's four feet four inches, and they have a round pupil and they also lay eggs. There are many varieties and color patterns throughout North America, but they always have a light stripe running from head to tail. Now in Humboldt Redwood State Park, the garter snake can be red, orange, yellow, or even black, red, and blue. I told you they come in a lot of colors. This right here is also a common garter snake. They're very common, harmless snakes, and they're oftentimes found near water, and they like to swim. If you see one of these in the water, you do not need to worry. They eat small mammals, frogs, and lizards, and usually hide under logs and rocks. They do not like to be around humans and will not generally approach you. If you see one in the water, just move out of its way. It's just swimming to cool off on a hot day. Are you guys ready for a crazy snake? This right here is the most unusual snake I think we have in Humboldt Redwood State Park. You might think you're looking at something really odd, and I think you are too. This snake right here is called the rubber boa, like a boa constrictor. It is 14 to 33 inches long, so it's relatively short, and it does have a round pupil. The rubber boas give live birth. That's right, they do not lay eggs. The eggs hatch inside the mother, and they have two to eight babies, kind of like you might have twins in your family. They are gray, like the color of clay, and they have a yellow belly. What's really unusual about them is how smooth their skin is. So not only do they look like clay, but they kind of feel like clay. Now their head is shaped the same as their tail. So their nickname is two-headed snake. They are even used in snake therapy because they're so docile and gentle, and they're not very likely to bite. Now this snake that's not very likely to bite us can eat birds, small mammals, and lizards. And as its name says, it is a type of boa constrictor. A boa constrictor constricts or squeezes its prey. It does not use venom. These snakes are very good swimmers, burrowers, and climbers. They can be found in trees, and again, they are not venomous. Now, what's neat about them is when you see them in the grasslands, the woodlands, or the forest, you remember how I said they can eat birds and mice? Well, this tail right here sometimes goes up in the air and waves around. It's not unusual at all for it to have scars on it. And the reason why is because while this tail is waving around, this head is in the nest eating the bird's eggs or the baby mice. The parents see what they think is the head, and the parent bird or the parent mouse will attack the tail. The tail can heal much easier than the head. That is a very smart adaption that allows the rubber boa to be a very mellow snake. You guys ready for another amazing snake that lives in Humboldt Redwood? This is the gopher snake. Gopher snake. What's a gopher? Well, let's see. A gopher is a gopher. A gopher is a small rodent that some people find in their garden. And it's kind of like a mouse. They reproduce really fast. There's a lot of them. They're about this long. And if you ever watch a cartoon where something goes and eats all the farmer's carrots or all the farmer's tomatoes in a whole row, that is a gopher. You go to pick your tomatoes or you go to pick your broccoli and when you go to pick it from the plant, the whole plant just comes up because something ate the roots. Those are gophers. 
and gophers cause a lot of damage. Now the gopher snake can be up to five to seven feet long. Remember how long five feet is? Well, seven feet is even longer. I am only five foot six. So a seven foot gopher snake is a whole foot and a half longer than me. That is a huge snake. It's a really good thing to know. These snakes are not venomous. The gopher snake can live 12 to 15 years. And they do have a round pupil and they lay eggs. They lay eggs and they um, are eight to 12 inches long, right when they hatch out of the egg. Now they're camouflage with grassy colors and so they can hide in the grass and they also practice mimicry. Mimicry means that they act like another animal, that they try and look like it. And what they practice the mimicry of is rattlesnakes. I'll teach you how to tell them apart from a rattlesnake later. But these right here will curl up and hiss in defense like a rattlesnake. And they will also sometimes grab a handful of grass and shake it. In fact, here in Humboldt Redwood State Park, we have what's called rattlesnake grass. And when it rattles, it sounds just like a rattlesnake. And these snakes will grab it with their tail or any other grass they can find and shake a whole handful to try and sound like a rattlesnake. That is very good mimicry. Now they are found throughout the US and they are helpful in gardens throughout the US. They are good climbers and burrowers and they're out on open roads and fields except for the very hottest days. Now you remember I said they're called gopher snakes because they eat gophers, but they also eat rodents and rabbits and birds and bird eggs, and occasionally even lizards. They don't have any venom or poison. They only kill by constriction. So that is the gopher snake. The next snake I'm gonna talk about is the western rattlesnake. The western rattlesnake is 15 inches to five and a half feet. They do have a superpower they have a sixth sense. Now the western rattlesnake has elongated pupils and I'll show you that in just a minute. And they also give live birth. They can have four to twelve babies. This right here is the western rattlesnake's pupil. If you look it's very long and thin. Now, western rattlesnakes are venomous pit vipers, and that is their sixth sense. You see, the rattlesnake can see, it can hear, it doesn't have any ears, but it can feel the vibrations, and its whole body kind of acts as an ear. They can taste, and they can smell, and they also can feel. But right here is their nostril, and right here is their pit. It's a little hole right in front of their eye, and it senses heat. The pit viper can see with its eye, and it can also see in infrared. It has heat vision. Now, the rattlesnake can see in heat means that it can hunt warm-blooded prey at night, on the darkest night, because they can find little mice and things like that. Now what the rattlesnake is of course most famous for is its fangs. This is a rattlesnake in attack position. As you can see they can lunge very far and they do have fangs and right on the end of those fangs you can see some venom. Now a rattlesnake in order to inject the venom has to put its fangs out. They actually rotate up inside the snake and then they come back down when they want to inject venom and they bite and the venom comes out the end of the fang and there's a big gland right here on either side 
that makes the venom in their cheek. So the rattlesnakes will have a triangular head where the venom is produced. Now, when the rattlesnake actually bites, it injects the venom if it wants to, and then it folds its teeth back up so that when it swallows, the teeth will not break off. Now, I said if it wants to, and the reason why is because venom is a tool that the rattlesnake uses to eat. First, it is a tool to eat. Second, it is a defense. Rattlesnakes do not want to bite us. They don't want to waste their venom. It's very hard for them to produce a lot of venom and they can run out. So most bites of humans are actually dry bites and don't have any poison at all. Now, as I said, the rattlesnake uses its fangs to bite its victim and it puts its fangs down into the victim, bites it quickly, and then releases. The reason why it does this is because it doesn't want to get bit. They wait a little while, and then when they think their prey might be dying, then they use their tongue. This right here is the rattlesnake's tongue, and they use it to smell. They use it to smell so that they can find the prey. And what they're smelling for is actually their own venom. Now, a rattlesnake sticks out its tongue to find its prey. And then once it finds it, it swallows it whole. This right here is another picture of a rattlesnake. And as you can tell, they have no ears. What they do have is these pits, like we talked about, and their body can hear through the vibrations in the ground. And the rattlesnakes can bite you, even if you hold them right behind the head. It is not wise to pick up a rattlesnake and it stresses them out. So what do rattlesnakes do? Well, rattlesnakes eat rodents, mice, squirrels, rabbits, lizards, snakes, frogs, salamanders, and even bugs, birds. Now, the rattlesnake venom that's here in California is good for any kind of rattlesnake bite. You do not need to identify the rattlesnake if you're bit in California. You just simply need to get to the hospital and get the anti-venom. Now the rattlesnakes hibernate in the winter, and as I said, they give live birth, so the mother knows her babies, and they oftentimes hibernate in family groups. A rattlesnake's most well-known feature is its rattle, and the rattlesnake can shed two to three times a year. Each time it sheds its skin, it gets a new rattle on its tail. So if you're trying to count how many years old a rattlesnake is, it's impossible to tell. But you can guess by dividing the number of rattle sections by two or three. However, the rattles are also a lot like fingernails, and it doesn't hurt the rattlesnake at all if they break off. Remember I said they shed their skin? This is a shed skin of a snake. Now the snakes are covered with scales and they shed their skin in order to get new protective scales and get rid of the old damaged ones. So rattlesnakes don't want to bite us. The Western rattlesnake is very well camouflaged and it tries to stay away from humans. If you go searching under rocks and under logs and prying in bark, the rattlesnake may bite you before it rattles. They don't always rattle before they bite. So it's really good to stay on trails and near your family when you're in the wilderness or in a park and be conscious of whether or not you're searching in animals' homes. It's also a good idea to not swim in irrigation ditches by the roads because the rattlesnakes really like to go in there to cool off. Now what I suggest is giving snakes space. Rattlesnakes have been known to jump several feet when biting and they can move up to three miles an hour. That's pretty fast. Now you think that a rattlesnake is scary, but rattlesnakes have more reason to be scared of us than we do of them. After all, humans kill many rattlesnakes 
every year. And rattlesnakes are not as deadly as most people think. In the whole United States, only five people die from any poisonous snake bite each year. I looked for several years and the average is five people. And that's not even just rattlesnake bites, that's any kind of snake bite. More people die in the US from dog bites, ladders, and even falling TVs than rattlesnakes. So I wanted to show you, here's a sign you might see at a park. It has the gopher snake and it has the rattlesnake. You can clearly see the gopher snake has a thin head. The rattlesnake has a triangle shaped head. The body's a little thicker and there's rattles at the tail. On the rattlesnake, they're usually not quite as shiny as a gopher snake. So the patterns can be very similar, but the body tends to be a little bit thicker and it's not quite as shiny. Now we're down to the last kind of snake here at Humboldt Redwoods. That is the California king snake. So the California king snake can be two to six feet long and they can be black and white or red and black and white. They are immune to the venom of all the snakes that live in the area where they live, in their native area. And they make very good pets. A lot of people buy them at pet stores and they're called milk snakes when they're sold for pets. They have very shiny scales and lots of different colors and patterns. They can eat lizards, rodents, birds, eggs, and any snake. In fact, a king snake can even eat a rattlesnake. Right here is the rattler, and this king snake is eating this rattlesnake. They are not venomous. They do not have any poison to inject at all. In fact, what they do is they squeeze their prey to death. Remember constrictors? Well, the California king snake squeezes with twice the pressure of a python. So, in other states, there are some very poisonous snakes with similar colors. But here at Humboldt Redwood State Park, if you see a snake that looks like this, it is not poisonous. So, that is the, all the snakes, all seven types of snakes that we have here at Humboldt Redwood State Park. And I told you next we talk about turtles. So, let's talk about turtles. To start off with, I'd like to talk about the desert tortoise. Now this does not live here at Humboldt Redwood State Park. The, de the desert tortoise lives in the desert of Southern California. But I wanted to make sure you knew what it looked like because it is our state reptile. Our state reptile, the desert tortoise, found in Southern California. It is a tortoise, which means it lives on land and lays its eggs on land and feeds on land. The reptile that we have that's a tortoise here at Humboldt Redwood State Park is going to be the Pacific Pond Turtle or the Western Pond Turtle. Same animal, just different name. It is the only native species of aquatic turtle here in the state of California and is a vulnerable species. That means we need to be very careful so that they don't become endangered or extinct. In fact, the Pacific Pond Turtle or Western Pond Turtle has already gone extinct throughout Canada and throughout much, many places in California. And in some places, there's ghost populations. That means that there's no eggs and no babies. There's just simply older turtles living there. This little turtle, is only seven to nine inches long, but they can live up to 50 years. So when you think about not having any babies and just having old turtles, a ghost population would be like visiting your grandparents at the old folks home or at the rest home. Now turtles need places with land or nearby water, such as creeks, ponds, rivers, irrigation ditches, and marshes and they may hibernate in the winter and even the summer droughts to try and conserve moisture. Now these turtles cannot swallow food without water. 
So they actually can't eat in the air. I found that interesting. Another interesting thing about these turtles is that their first three years of life, they are carnivores. They love meat. They love insects, fish, tadpoles, frogs, and dead things. But when they're three years old, they start eating algae and lily pads and cattail roots and other plants. Do you think that you like more salad when you get older? You never know. You should try it. Now, these turtles have to be 10 to 12 years old in order to lay eggs and have babies. They lay about 5 to 13 eggs per year, and they like to bask on logs and boulders. What that means is they go down to the river, and they find a nice log or a rock, and they lay on it in the sun, just sitting there in the sun, enjoying themselves. And they also move very slowly on land, but very fast in the water. So it's very important that you watch for turtles crossing the road because they do move slow. Now that's our only native turtle here in Humboldt Rabbit State Park, but we do sometimes find another turtle. And I wanted to tell you about this turtle too. This is the red-eared slider. This is not a native species. The red-eared slider is introduced. That means humans brought them here. Why would humans introduce this turtle? Well, this is something you can help with. How humans introduce this turtle is because turtles are cute and people buy them as pets. And this is the most common type of turtle sold in a pet store. Turtles grow up, and get large, and get stinky, and people don't like cleaning the tank. And they don't want to kill their little pet, maybe Timothy Turtle. And this is very bad because then they decide to release Timothy Turtle, their pet, into the river, and he, he will eat the food and the eggs and the babies of the Pacific Pond Turtle. And maybe he has a little cold that doesn't make him very sick, but it might be deadly to a Pacific pond turtle. So if you get a pet turtle and you don't want it anymore, please, please return it to the pet store. Don't release it into the river. So there's something I wanted to show you guys over here. This right here is a rattlesnake skeleton and you can see the rattles here. You can see the individual vertebrae or rib bones. And here you can see the head. And the fangs are actually folded up. So I wanted to show you guys the injection fangs are right there. And they're folded up. And then I also wanted to show you guys a turtle that died. Here is its back, and you can see the individual scales, and there, right there are the bones of the turtle. And then the last thing I wanted to show you guys is I actually built a couple of ecosystems out of Legos to share with you guys today. Now, reptiles can live in a variety of ecosystems, and here at Humboldt Redwood State Park, our main ecosystems that we have reptiles in are the riparian zone. Riparian zone means down by the river. We also have them in the grasslands. That would be at the higher elevations of Humboldt Redwood State Park, such as Grasshopper Peak. And you remember a lot of snakes eat insects and grasshoppers. So that's a pretty good place to find snakes. Now in the grasslands, it's going to be dry and full sun and so we'll get very different types of reptiles than down in the riparian zone. We do have a few reptiles that you might find in the redwood forest but you don't have to worry about rattlesnakes in the redwood forest. It's not sunny enough for them. So let me show you guys the lego sets I built to share with you. Here is the riparian zone. And in the riparian zone, we have the river. This right here is a small forest on the banks of the river. And I put a little snake there that's cruising along in the sand, getting warm. And then here's a fish over here. Now remember, turtles like fish. And turtles also live down at the river. 
here's a frog. A frog might be another good thing for feeding some reptiles. Here are some baby ducks swimming along in the river. Here's a bear. Now the bear might come and eat the turtle or the snake. And here's an owl and a raven. They also might be preying on them. Now here is a log and here's another log. These logs sticking out of the river are crucial habitat for our reptile friends. You can see the happy turtle right here, sitting on the log, basking in the sun and getting warm. Now this right here is, um, I believe Raphael, a ninja turtle. And when ninja turtles with the red, red ears right here, the red mask reminded me of the red-eared slider. And when the red-eared slider comes into the riparian zone, it causes destruction of habitat and can be very dangerous to the other animals in the riparian zone by outcompeting them for food like we talked about. So I'm gonna remove the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle or the red-eared slider from the environment when I see it. Now here's another habitat to show you guys. This one is the grassland habitat. And in the grassland habitat, we have some short bushes. Trees grow slower up in the higher elevation. We have some spiders and ants, even a scorpion back here, because it's very dry. And right here, we have a western fence lizard on a log doing push-ups. They like to show off their blue belly. Remember that? And then we also have the king snake. This king snake is going along in the dry environment, hiding in the grass, looking for something to eat. So that right there is my two Lego builds to share with you today. We built a couple of ecosystems. Now, I want to take a minute and thank you guys for joining me today while we learned about reptiles and what reptiles live here at Humboldt Redwood State Park. Now it's time to take the Junior Ranger Pledge. Are you guys ready? You need to stand up straight and raise your right hand. And then just repeat after me, except for say your name. So I, Shanna, promise to treat the earth and all living things with care and respect and to be thoughtful about what I do and how it affects others and to learn about the importance of nature and our heritage. Thank you guys. I'll see you next Thursday at 1130. See you next week for Junior Rangers.